Gisneriad Society Convention 2016, and I'm here with a Syningia speciosa expert, Dave Zaitlin, who uh, entered a couple of these plants, but I'd like to have him talk about the collection in general and the difference between the wild Syningia speciosas and the fancy hybrids. So here's Dave. Hi, Dave. Do you want to go through these uh, speciosas first and then maybe talk about the ones that you entered in particular? Well, unfortunately, it's not a very big class <laughs> anymore. It's bigger than it used to be, Yes, though. yes. There was one year, I think we only had one or two, but um, I don't know. What do you want to know? But So, um, well, this is the only representative of the species in the wild that we have here. So why don't you tell us about that one? <clears throat> so this is a plant that I grew from seed about three or four years ago, and it was grown this year as a multi-stemmed. Um, I've grown these for it's the same exact accession from uh, with a single crown and you have usually have larger leaves and uh, uh, fewer of them of course and but you still get a lot of flowers but so this is comes from a town I collected the seed actually near it's from a, a beach in Brazil um, a beach called Praia Joao Fernandes it's near the town of Armasantos Buzios so this form is generally known as Buzios um, you can see it's a, it's a fairly small wild speciosa, uh, small flowers. It, in the wild, they tend to vary from light lavender to, to this one is a fairly dark one, which is pretty much why I collected the seed. Um, but it is pretty much representative of, of wild speciosa. Um, but if you move over to some of these, you can see that all of these, <coughs> these this, this, and that, have erect flowers. The flower symmetry is very different than these. Uh, apparently, the result of a single gene recessive mutation. <coughs> and these plant like this is actually very representative of the uh, modern cultivars, uh, single single uh, corolla. Um, this we don't know much about, but this is for a Syningia speciosa, especially with double flowers, is a very, very small plant. Isn't that yes. the one Ron Meyer <laughs> got there? It's always good to have Canada. a yeah, yeah, so he's been propagating these. They should even fly sweaters for that. <laughs> Uh, this here again is again typical of, uh, of the cultivated form, so the leaves are rather small, but some of these plants get much, much larger. Oh, thank you. That's something given to me here. But actually, the most unusual plant here is this one. <coughs> this apparently is representative of an older group of cultivars. Um, this seed was also obtained from Mauro Pajoto in, in uh, Brazil. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, you can see that it has essentially wild type flowers. But this is in uh, pink, not purple, and but they're much larger than most of the wild forms. And some work that I did some years ago showed that this plants like this appear to be tetraploids, which are the only ones known uh, in Syningia speciosa. So, but discoveries made in the last uh, couple of decades, we now know of at least. 20 wild populations of Syningia speciosa, and there's a lot of variation, um, so it's it's ripe for a uh, an evolutionary study uh, that will tell us lots about how these populations uh, diverged, <coughs> how long they've been separated, and we will use our new resource. We have a genome sequence of Syningia speciosa, which we hopefully will publish sometime this year. Fabulous. Well, that's what I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> Great uh, display of uh, Syningia speciosus, and it's interesting to hear and to see the original, one of the original wild forms here. Thank you for bringing it to the show, Dave.